Hey guys, Bonk here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the competitive history of Mewtwo in Super Smash Bros. Here's my fun fact for today. Did you know that Mewtwo is, in fact, the second Mew? Let's talk about that. If you grew up with an old, colorless Game Boy, you probably played a first-generation Pokemon game. And you probably found one of the coolest hidden bosses in gaming. Near one of the very first towns you visit, there's a small cave near the water. It's guarded by a guy who says it's so dangerous that you can't enter until you've beaten the Elite Four. Naturally, that's incredibly enticing for most players who see the cave as an extension of the game's finale. Well, less the cave and more the Pokemon inside it. That's right, it's time to talk about the most legendary of legendaries, Mewtwo. Of course, if you want legendary skill, you should probably just, like, uh, train a lot. Or something. And if you want help with that training, you should go to ProGuides.com, where we've got live coaching, character guides, and lessons from the pros. Now, Mewtwo wasn't just legendary in skill. In the old days, before everything was datamined for wikis and websites, Mewtwo was an actual legend. Kids talk over school lunches about the Pokémon. How they caught it, if they defeated it instead, if they saved their Master Ball for it. It didn't take long for Nintendo to see how popular the Pokémon was and put them in lots of products and shows. Including Super Smash Bros. Melee. Mewtwo may have been one of the most exciting additions to the Young franchise, but he definitely wasn't the strongest addition. Mewtwo has been low tier for pretty much all of Melee. In Melee, Mewtwo is very lightweight, very floaty, and has a huge hurt box. Put all these things together and he's better at taking hits than dishing them out. On the bright side, Melee Mewtwo is absolutely one of the sickest low tiers in any Smash Bros game. And yes, we know that's subjective, but just look at this. The glowing purple hitboxes, the undulating projectile, the surprisingly potent combo game? It's all pretty stylish. And it's all footage from Shadow Claw, a combo video made in 2006 by Taj. In the early days, Taj was the world's best Mewtwo. He was occasionally rivaled by Iori, but Iori wasn't as dedicated to Mewtwo and would switch off to other characters. Taj would play Mewtwo more consistently, and he'd maximize the character's strengths. He'd use Mewtwo's long wave dash and teleport cancels to gain mobility, he'd optimize Mewtwo's combo game, particularly on fast fallers, and he'd cheese. He'd pull the Uno Reverse card at the ledge by melting his opponent through the stage using Psychic Witchery. Taj's Mewtwo would pave the way for other Mewtwo's like Vector Man. Back in the old days, combo videos were vital for building player bases. Before VODs, Twitch clips, and Discords, combo videos were one of the few ways to see the theoretical pinnacles of a character. Not to mention, Taj put in work with Mewtwo. He got an impressive 17th at Apex 2010, the character's best solo placing at a major. He did even better at some early majors when he played Marth in Mewtwo, getting 5th at FC Diamond and 7th at Pound 2. But like many low-tier players, he was doing well because he was skilled. His best results came when he put those skills to work on a top-tier character. At Genesis 2, he played a lot of Marth, he beat a lot of top players, and he got third, outplacing everyone but Armada and Mango, the best two players in the world at the time. This is the rule for Mewtwo, not the exception. He gets the few historic results he has from great players who pick him up because he's cool. After Taj, two international players would pick up the torch. Zoma from Japan and Leffen from Sweden. Zoma was renowned as the best Mewtwo solo main in Melee's more modern days. He only traveled once to attend Super Smash Con in 2016, where he got 33rd, beating Sirene, the 100th ranked player. However, his loss to Pew Pew Yu laid bare the character's flaws. Pew Pew Yu could easily outspace Zoma's Mewtwo, and the punishes Mewtwo had on Marth, a non-fast faller, weren't near as good as what Marth had on Mewtwo. Pew Pew Yu patiently dismantled Zoma. Zoma would later switch to Fox, with Mewtwo as a pocket pick. He'd shoot up Japan's 2018 power rank to third place. And then there's Leffen. Consistently top five in the world, Leffen is a legendary player in his own right. He's busted out the Mewtwo in lower stakes tournaments, locals, and matches he can afford to spare. Most notably, he beat Professor Pro with Mewtwo in early 2018, when Professor Pro was ranked 41st on the PGR. This is probably Mewtwo's best win in recent years. From Mewtwo's wins, we can see the character has some strengths. Like good hitboxes and throws, particularly against fast fallers. Mewtwo also has good horizontal movement tools and wave dash and teleports, which can make his offense tricky to predict. 
His edge guarding and recovery are solid too. His aerials have some pretty good potential, and his up special is great. However, patient opponents can wait out and counter his approach options. Aside from wave dash and teleport, Mewtwo's not that fast, so he's campable too. But none of this, none of it at all, is the true problem. Mewtwo's true problem in every Smash game is simple. It's the tail. That weird bulbous tail has a hurt box on it. This wouldn't be so bad on its own, but the tail is a part of a ton of Mewtwo's attacks and animations. So it extends from his body, getting him hit. Even making kill confirms hit at wider percent ranges. The tail hurtbox also greatly limits Mewtwo's options. Take his back air, for example. It's a big and active hitbox, great for edgeguarding and controlling space. But it uses his tail, so it makes him much easier to hit if it whiffs. It's so bad that Leffen will often stand pretty still, facing his opponent. It's all even worse combined with his lightweight and floatiness. If all that weren't enough, Mewtwo has a brutally slow tech roll, making him much easier to tech chase. The design decision to make Mewtwo's tail a hurtbox is especially important. It'll follow Mewtwo into later Smash games and determine his fate. And we say later Smash games because Mewtwo didn't make the cut for Brawl. It's unclear why, but the most likely explanation is that he was cut for time. There are unused files for seven characters in Brawl, called the Forbidden Seven. Mewtwo had more files than any other character. Nintendo likely wanted to keep him since he wasn't an Echo Fighter, but couldn't manage it. Mewtwo wouldn't make the cut for Smash 4 either, but thankfully for him, Nintendo caught on to DLC by then. Mewtwo was the first downloadable character, and he was free. True to his lore, he was being used as an experiment to see how DLC integration would work. The Smash community was happy to have Mewtwo back, though initially, he wasn't seen as that strong. Still, he had one massive improvement from Melee. His tail hurtbox was much less egregious, partially due to putting some of it on the Z-axis, partially due to animations, and partially due to Smash 4 lacking the same quick offense as in Melee. The defense buffs in Smash 4 helped Mewtwo as well. In particular, Mewtwo's air dodge was faster than normal, and its animation didn't have any good indicator for when it ended, making it hard to catch and punish. He was no longer insanely easy to tech chase and juggle. Mewtwo was pretty dangerous to mess with in the air as well. His aerials were fast, and the new Shadow Claw hit particularly hard. His up smash also got a massive buff, connecting more reliably and killing off the top pretty early. Same with his up throw, which was one of the game's better kill throws. And in Smash 4, good vertical kill options were very strong. Mewtwo's offense was great in general. He had solid combos, good hitboxes, a command grab that was great in the air, and Disable, a very deadly stun. However, most players put him somewhere in low or mid-tier. Early on in the game, he was a bit too slow to fully push his advantage, and some of his moves didn't work right. But the real problem was still disadvantage. Mewtwo died early off the top, and even if his tail hurtbox wasn't as egregious, he was still massive and easy to hit. To top it all off, Nintendo made him considerably lighter since Melee. Smash 4 also made vertical kill options better, which hurt floaty characters. So he was like a weird cat, alien-shaped balloon. Even as a low to mid-tier, Mewtwo had some surprising successes. Notably, when Mew Squared used Mewtwo to beat Mewtwo King's Donkey Kong. Yep, nothing confusing about that sentence. Anyways, Mewtwo received a lot of buffs, too. He got reductions to end lag on several moves, damage and knockback increases, buffs to his Nair hitbox, and even buffs to his base stats. Most notably, he got very fast and slightly heavier, pretty much directly buffing two big weaknesses. By the middle of 2016, Mewtwo had a bona fide player base and some huge wins. The biggest and earliest was probably Abadongo at Pound 2016. At Pound 2016, Abadongo showcased what was then the world's most technically skilled and intelligent Mewtwo. He'd mastered strong technical punishes, like using Mewtwo's confusion to set up for a platform kill, or landing the difficult but strong Nair footstool disable combo. He'd clearly labbed out a lot of drag down Nair setups in general, using the Nair to get both grabs and strong damage combos. To top it off, he played an excellent adaptive neutral with Mewtwo. In Grand Finals, he adapted to the Mario matchup by using small Shadow Balls to control the stage, often foregoing a full or even half charge. Then he'd use Mewtwo's Confusion to intercept aerial approaches. He also muted Mewtwo's bad disadvantage through strong teleport cancels. 
And through good spacing, he used Mewtwo's down tilt a lot like Marf's, keeping opponents at a good distance. Mewtwo rocketed up to high tier, where he'd stay for the entire game. It's one of the best evolutions we've seen in Smash. It made sense given his impressive player base. Wadi, Rich Brown, and SDX were the biggest names, but many regions had their own great Mewtwo's. Like Unknown in the Midwest, Death Horse in Canada, Magi Magi in Europe, Salva in Mexico, Compact in Japan, and more. This also isn't talking about his role as a secondary for players like DeBuzz and Esam. Mewtwo did decline in power as the late Smash 4 meta came, though. Abadongo gradually switched over to Bayonetta, and other Mewtwo mains fell off a bit. Still, SDX and Wadi would find some of their best results in later tournaments. So Mewtwo was still making top 8s, but he wasn't winning majors anymore. The top tiers simply outperformed him. While Mewtwo had even or winning matchups into most of the cast, popular top tiers gave him trouble, Cloud especially. Plus, players got better at pushing their advantage and punishing Mewtwo's ambiguous air dodges and teleports. All things said and done, Smash 4 was Mewtwo's best game. It was in no small part because of that tail. The slower speed of the game, sturdier shields, and better air dodge made it less trouble. That and in Smash 4, Mewtwo's tail mostly stuck to his body during his animations. In Ultimate, this would not be the case. Initially, Mewtwo looked very good, mostly because, like in Pokemon, his stats are pretty nuts. He is one of the fastest characters on the ground or in the air. His core offensive moves are pretty quick too, so early on it was easier to combo and move with him. Not to mention his edge guarding, kill throws, and disable traps looked good too. In those early days, he had some interesting prospects with players like SDX, Wadi, Unknown, and Armada all showing interest. But with time, Mewtwo's fatal flaw revealed itself. It's the tail. You already know it's the tail. Ultimate restored a lot of melee-style animations where he circles around, spinning his tail everywhere. Aesthetically, the change is a big buff as Mewtwo looks very cool and dynamic, but gameplay-wise, it is a hard nerf. The swirling tail means that Mewtwo effectively has one of the biggest hurt boxes in the game. If you're a super heavy, that's not the end of the world, but Mewtwo is tied for the fifth lightest character in Ultimate. His disadvantage is much worse too. His air dodge isn't anything special anymore, confusion isn't as effective in the air, and his recovery is more vulnerable. This is all within an engine that's upped the speed of the game and within a cast that has disjoints to rival Mewtwo's. Even worse yet, it's very useful to control space and ultimate through fox trotting and large aerials. However, Mewtwo's dash exposes his tail, as does his largest aerial, back air. Many people know that Mewtwo's tail hurtbox is bad, but they don't understand just how bad. It doesn't just make him easier to hit, it hinders every part of his game. Players were quick to catch on to this, and Mewtwo fell into mid or low tiers, losing much of his player base as well, including Abadongo and Wadi, who still keeps him as a pocket pick. However, SDX remained true to Mewtwo for a while and got strong results, 9th at Glitch 6 and 17th at Genesis 6. Along the way, he'd beat Abadongo, getting a bit of retribution. But SDX's results would fall off from there, 33rd at Frostbite and 65th at Super Smash Con. He'd take a break from Ultimate and return with a new tag, Secret, and new mains, Joker and Pokemon Trainer. Nowadays, Unknown and Zenkai are Mewtwo's best mains. Zenkai in particular has carried the character on, getting great wins and placing in New York tournaments. Otherwise, there's not much. Mewtwo has a very small player base. This data from Smash researcher Bernard's Loop shows the character has some of the lowest appearances on the power rankings. Just how low does the data go? Well, Bernard's Loop has also ranked characters based on placements in 2019, and guess who's second lowest? Funnily enough, the real problem isn't Mewtwo's power level. Mewtwo's at least decent in Ultimate. The problem is that he's not that rewarding. He takes a lot of work to master, and in return you get a solid mid-tier who evaporates if someone looks at his tail the wrong way. He's still cool, but, well, he's also disappointing. In many ways, Ultimate should be his game. Ultimate rewards speed, combos, advantage state, glass cannon characters like Mewtwo. He has such potential to be a hype high tier. But Ultimate's not his game, and it's because of a hurt box on his tail and some bad movement animations. On the bright side, Ultimate Mewtwo does match his lore. He's a character you rarely see because his creators did him dirty. Okay, on the real bright side, Mewtwo got buffed in patch 8.0. Most notably, they gave him better throw combos and faster shadow balls. 
The buffs aren't much, but they show Nintendo might help him out like in Smash 4. Although he may need a hurtbox adjustment to be worth mastering. But what do you think? Does Mewtwo have a chance without fixing the tail hurtbox? And if you want to level up your Smash knowledge, be sure to subscribe for more videos.